Okay, we got a service call. I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, we came out here when the snow was coming down. All four wheels were locked. We couldn't get it to release. Uh, they elected to leave the, the trailer by itself. Uh, and it's locked. I mean, for the most part, let's see if I can do this one-handed. You just, you, you see, I mean, the bar's bending. We're putting some pressure on it. So we're like, okay, we'll come back. So we came so back. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our adapter, open it. We're gonna put air into the trailer. As you can tell, we came down here. We've got the air open. We got no air coming out. Okay, interesting. So the thing that caught my eye was the airbag is weren't inflating. The game plan was that we thought the drums were froze. The trailers that has been sitting for a long time. They need to move it. So we went nuclear, which was worst case scenario. We got to torch the drums, wheel seals, brake shoes. But let me show you. This is where a little troubleshooting, a little thinking, a little observation pays off. So we noticed the airbags weren't inflating. We went ahead and we put the, the compressor off the service truck on here. We got the handle open. We've got no air coming out. So, okay. So, you know, process of elimination. So we go ahead and we we install our uh, adapter. We go right to the, to the line to release it. We take a notation of our brake chamber. And then, I don't know if you can tell, but the position of the, the rod has moved, it came in and our drum oh, let me find a bar hold on and there we go so what's the problem okay we're not getting air at the service line or the emergency brake or, or whatever you want to call it okay service means you apply the brake emergency means it releases as a big can on the other side for those of you that like to get technical so what we did is we went ahead and we go under the uh the truck and old school, you gotta just trace it. And here are my lines. Here's my line coming from the front. I already took it off. We have no restriction. We have no bees, mod doublers, homeless people or whatever in here. We have found homeless people inside trailers while we're working on them, sadly. They got nowhere else to go. The trailers are not locked. They'll, they'll climb in them. And you know, what do you do, right? I mean, it's sad, sad situation. But anyway, this valve is bad. So it's just process of elimination. Had we just gone with the gut, the gut check came out, drums are froze, buy four drums, four pairs of shoes, charge the customer for it. And guess what? You would still have to replace that. So now we're gonna go ahead and take this off and put a new valve and save the customer some labor and go from there point here to this video is troubleshoot diagnose verify i mean as simple as it is like this case it's too simple to get caught up in or oh, the drums are froze the tra the trailer's been sitting for a year and a half and these drums and these shoes and you you, you know you, you jump into that and then you finish all that and then you still got the same problem so, you know, always be diligent and just make sure, hey, are we getting air to the tank? That's the other thing. Uh, when I came down here and I opened this valve, we, even with the shop air, we had a little bit of air. So we got a restriction in here because it goes from here straight to the tank. And the thing that alerted me, again, was the airbags weren't inflating. Airbags should always inflate, uh, no matter what. You might wait five minutes, whatever, but they're gonna inflate. And you can check the pressure. You can go ahead and put a gauge here. Uh, Due to the amount of flow that wasn't coming out, I just determined it was no need to install a gauge to get a pressure reading. It was just too low. Low pressure means we don't release the slack adjusters and that's the end of that. Thanks for watching. If you're gonna be working on air supply, semis, one thing you gotta have, you gotta have your own collection of brass. Reducers to go from one size, jump sizes, male to female and vice versa. Here we got a male to female which is what we used and then like i said you always got to have your collection of brass all sizes all kinds of fittings because when you're out there at night by yourself it's just you against the world and whatever you brought
So anyway, that's a little side note. You guys that do road service, brass. Brass, brass, brass. They don't want to buy your brass? Hey, tell them what? Next time you go on a road call and you got to drive, like for me, if I got to drive back two hours to go get a piece of brass, to go, go get a $10 piece of brass, I'd be sure and let the customer know that, hey, I got to drive two hours one way, which is four hours at 125 an hour to go get a piece of brass. If you're not okay with it, let me know. And I, no, I'll just call, kill the, the road call. And it's just usually the customer will call your manager, rip them a new one, and guess what? You're going to get uh, brass. You're going to get what you need. Anyway, brass, very important. Have an assortment. Thanks for watching.